Hello, welcome to Footsteps and Pass Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to put on corner supports on a woven wire fence or high tension fence. Uh, either way with uh, the wood posts. Uh, stick around, let's go for a ride. These are my two uh, support posts here. This is not a corner, it's just going to go straight. I'm going to mount a gate on this one here. So we still have to make sure we have a good amount of resistance for this when we go to pull the fence with the tractor. Otherwise our posts will start to fall over like this. I place my posts at uh, every 12 feet on center all the way down this fence row. But up when it comes to the support areas, I only space my eight feet. That'll make my job a little easier at uh, putting in the corner support. So. Just because I spaced it at 8 feet, that would be to the center of the post, so we need to take an exact measurement from the top of this post to the top of this post here. Which would be 93 inches. Let's go get the uh, post here that we're going to put in. When you're out in the middle of the field, it's imperative that you remember to bring all the tools that you need. We're going to... Um, Go ahead and mark out this one. Forgot a pencil, so I'm just going to scratch it out with one of the screws. Ninety-three inches. Also, you make sure you have a power inverter, or if you have a make make sure you have power inverter to run your electric tools, your battery tools, or we're just going to use a chainsaw. leave those behind by the way if you guys have a front loading tractor they work great as tables next part you're going to need uh, to make sure you got screws or nails that go all the way through your end post and stick out a couple of inches to hold your uh, horizontal post here uh, I'm using a, um, a six inch uh, construction screw Hopefully 93 inches fits. <laughs> okay. Alright, you're going to pick your uh, lowest post. And I'd like to put the, uh, start the screw. Pretty much all the way at the top of the post. Then if you come down to this other post, you can take yourself a block of wood or a, um, I'm just going to use a screw. set that down. Something for that post, the uh, horizontal post to rest on while you're holding this up. If you have help, that's great, but I currently don't have help. Okay, you want to take your level and set it on here. I like to make sure these are level. All the way to the top of the post. Set on my screw there. It can be difficult with a round post. Let's get the balance on there, but you can get it. Take out that support post, use that on the next fence. Okay, for this next part, we're going to need to put in the wire uh, tensioners. I'm using a 12 and a half gauge high tensile fence wire, high carbon galvanized steel wire. It's the same thing that, well, high tensile wire uh, fences are made out of. Um, I'm just going to do the old fashioned, um, put the board in, we'll wind it up. They have other, um, other ways of winding them up. Uh, they have ratcheting systems and whatnot. Uh, I think that the um, uh, use a treated board and twist it around is the most cost-effective easy way to do this besides I've already put in about I don't know 10 of these and that's the way I did them so that's the way they're going to stay so I'll get you a close-up shot first of all for an eight foot on center I found that you need about 20 feet of wire to, to make it work 
you can take your own measurements, but at an eight foot center, about four foot high fence, you're gonna need about 20 feet of wire. So let me get you a close up of this. So this is just your standard uh, wire, high tensile. This is not bailing wire or anything. This is very, very strong, high carbon steel fencing wire. You're also going to need some inch and a quarter fence staples. I've chose to get the ones with the barbs on the end. They're not that much more expensive and they hold in a lot better. So just those, you need a handful of those. And of course, a hammer. <laughs> First, we need to figure out the which way the fence is going to be running. Is it going to run that way or is it going to run that way? If we put it in, we know which way it's going to be running. So my fence is going to end here and going to continue on this way, uh, down that way. Ooh, the post is out. So we want the um, wire to be low on this side to have a strong anchor, anchor down at the bottom of the uh, fence. It's going to be high on that side. So when this, when we tighten up this diagonal wire, which we'll do here in a minute, and you understand a little better. It's going to pull the top of this one this way into this post, into this post for double strength. Because what we're going to we're going to actually attach the fence to this. And we're going to pull it with the tractor this way, and so it's all going to work together. Uh, so it's going to come from a diagonal down to the bottom to anchor this to the top here, and it's going to pull the whole thing this way. We're going to be tightening it all up, and then we're going to attach the fence and we're going to pull the whole thing that way. Hopefully, it doesn't move. So we're going to start low, grab my staple, drive the staple in down low, excuse me, not drive it, set it, set the staple in low. Set the staple in high up top. about where your post is here, or where the horizontal support is. The difference between setting a staple or a nail and driving one is setting it, you just nail it and you let it stick out a little bit. So this is a, a set staple. We can run the uh, wire through this. If we drove it, obviously we wouldn't be able to run the wire through it and do the system that we're gonna do. So the wire's gonna go through that nail. There are uh, rubber sleeves you can get for these to protect your posts. I, I didn't put them in. I don't think uh, you absolutely need them for this type of fence that I'm putting in. But if you want those, you can get those. And then the same thing on this side, but this side's the low side. Low. Bring it up here. Pretty sure you guys can see that wire. So we went through the set staple there, ran it up diagonal, the top of this post here, and we crossed them both in here. <laughs> we'll fall over, get this shot. Taking risks I'm on the edge of a cliff. All right, now we're gonna take this, try to tighten this up the most we can by hand, and then we're gonna drive this staple home. Okay, try to make sure you have slack. Because I like to go through here. We're gonna put a couple staples in now. take these ends because some of you are going to tell me well Jay that's going to slip take these ends this way cross them over each other you could set the nail or the staple if you wanted to and then put them in but it doesn't matter I'll drive that one home it's going to be a lot harder for these to um, slip out if they got a bend like that in them. So I'm going to pound these in a little bit. I'm going to leave these for now. 
but we will wind up uh, nipping them off, but I want to make sure it does indeed doesn't slip, which it shouldn't. All right, guys, it's important that we leave this one set and not driven because we want this to be able to move back and forth in here as we tighten this up to um, use as like a, a bearing or more like a guide to keep the wire low. Once the tires, once this is tight, this is tight, then we'll drive this one home and put two more in. For the particular system that we're using, you need to get a, a treated uh, scrap lumber. These came as stickers with the fence posts when we purchased them. Uh, these these are actually not pine. These are like a, a treated hardwood, just a, a junk wood probably. But regardless, it was treated in along with the fence posts, and it's a hardwood, so it should last. <laughs> So last okay outside. We push it in away from the pasture. We're standing in the pasture, we're pushing it away from the pasture. And just go around and around and around. I'll speed this part up for you. All right, when you're done, you'll have a good amount of tension. You can let go like this. Make sure it doesn't hit you in the face because that is a lot of tension. <laughs> so we created ourselves a turnbuckle here and that's going to hold these good and solid this way. As you notice, they're a little sloppy this way, but that's going to, they'll be okay. It's this way, nice and solid. Uh, our uh, treated board here should last a fairly long time. I like to keep them up and down a little particular that way, I guess. All right, you see how we got to twist all the way from the turnbuckle lever. We twist it all the way up. All the way up, almost, not quite, but almost to the post. You'll feel it starting to get a lot of tension on that wire. Now it's time to drive the low staple home now that we have all of this tensioned. And just in case that decides to slip, come over about two inch, inch or two, drive one on the left and, and drive one on the right. I don't know how you're seeing it, but that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah, this should keep it because we're going to take this, like I said, and we're going to staple a fence to it and we're going to tug it with the tractor. So this needs to be able to hold up to that. And there you have it. It should look something like this when you're all done. This one's ready for the fence. Uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you learned something today. Uh, it's just some quick, simple tip to get out here while it's really nice. Now I'm going to hook up this fence and start pulling. If I have time, maybe I'll make a video into that. So um, again, this is Jay with Footsteps in the Past channel. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about something we did today, uh, just put a comment down below. I'll respond to them. Uh, also, if if you need to find where to put something, I'll put the uh, link to the wire and the staples down below and what we use. Relatively inexpensive for, depending on the size you're doing. We're, we're only uh, fencing in about two acres here, so. Okay, uh, thanks for watching.